Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone again. So I'm uh, Elias Mima from uh, Technical University of Vienna, um, where we have uh, roughly 27,000 students and 5,000 employees, and uh, we are in uh, science and engineering university. And um, yeah, today I want to present you uh, some lessons uh, learned uh, when uh, deploying Jupyter Hubs for, for lectures, for, for teaching. So maybe a bit about the project. So in the beginning, as I said in the introduction before, um, I'm working in a thing called Data Lab where we uh, want to support uh, our researchers and uh, lecturers with, with data science uh, uh, and machine learning workflows. And so quite early they, they, they come, came up the need for, for Jupyter Notebooks and also for accelerators, GPUs in Jupyter Notebooks. But um, uh, when I built up the, the first system, um, um, soon um, it was asked uh, if, if they can use it in, in lectures, in, in teaching. And so my uh, focus then over the last year was uh, supporting uh, several lectures with, with Jupyter uh, Notebooks, uh, Jupyter Hubs. And um, yeah, uh, last semester we had around uh, 850 students and this semester we have a few more lectures, but less students, 650. And um, um, yeah, uh, but uh, this, this semester the, the requirements are a bit harder. And uh, saying so, yeah, the, the requirements are really diverse. So we have uh, uh, small lectures with 20 students uh, doing um, Earth observation with large data sets and, and um, a need for, for, for notebooks with a lot of memory. And on the other hand, we have this uh, really large uh, beginners uh, programming courses uh, with 200 students doing simple Python programming, and uh, therefore we, we can go with one gigabyte of memory, as an example. Um, um, yeah. So w one, um, uh, one uh, thing to solve was authentication first. Uh, so um, I don't know, we, we in Austria, we, we, we have lots of ISIL solutions and not really uh, a good uh, solution for, for for the authentication system uh, uh, providing uh, uh, for new services. Uh, and um, so I came up with the solution of using the, the um, learning platform, the learning management system, um, Moodle in our case for the uh, for the authentication um, method. And uh, I was um, somehow adapting an already there authenticator based um, on uh, for, to use this LTI 1.3 uh, interface uh, that Moodle and Canvas uh, have. Um, yeah, uh, another thing was that um, as uh, they, as I, already told the uh, uh, lectures are quite diverse so so the software stack they use is so, so some are coming from technical chemistry needing special packages others uh, doing machine learning deep learning whatever so i decided to to, to provide them in, in the current phase with in, in individual uh, software stacks for each lecture and um, as it's for teaching and exercises, we um, we needed some uh, method for for grading and uh, doing the um, exchange of the exercises. Uh, so we are going uh, with MB Grader right now. But um, uh, yeah, I will tell you more about this. And um, of course, uh, yeah, persistence of of the data was important. So we uh, we, sh we we have shared folders and home folders and. Uh, uh, optionally group folders uh, that we we persist. Um, yeah, some features or uh, optional features uh, we use is um, a virtual desktop for 
providing uh, lectures with uh, 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 which have the demand for some GUI tools uh, uh, with an uh, VNC uh, uh, browser-based VNC solution. And uh, right now we have a lecture where they do some C++ programming. So we also gave them uh, an IDE uh, um, um, VS Code like IDE called TEA uh, in our setup. Um, yeah, we all uh, run this uh, on, on, on Kubernetes um, based uh, on Magnum, uh, on our OpenStack cluster, uh, which uh, Stack HPC was helping us to, to, to build up. Um, yeah, if in the um, I, I will come to, to the details later, but we, we were using Cinder um, as a backend for, uh, for, for, Kubernetes, uh, for, uh, for the PVs for um, Kubernetes uh, backed by Ceph. Uh, we were also using Manila, uh, and uh, now we are using CephFS uh, directly. For the um, load balancing, we are using Octavia. Yeah, so we are running everything right now on, on, on virtual machines, uh, no bare metal machines, and uh, uh, we, I, I'm using uh, Zero to Jupyter Hub, uh, so this is Helm charts for the Kubernetes cluster, where we um, additionally additionally create um, uh, resources in the cluster with, with some Ansible scripts. And um, yeah, the main effort really went into building the individual images with the individual uh, software stack for, for each uh, lecture. So we have a quite uh, elaborate uh, CI, CD, uh, uh, set up already for this. Um, yeah, images are based on, on Docker stacks. We do some image uh, scanning uh, since uh, this semester, and yeah, we are running everything on, on our own registry for speeding up everything. So, yeah, as I said, um, we are using Docker stacks, and if you have a collaborative uh, Jupyter environment um, uh, where you have shared folders, you, you have to have users inside the containers. And uh, that is uh, not really a problem if you, if you run the containers as root. Then you can uh, uh, somehow uh, um, uh, inject uh, new users at the at the startup of the container, but running the containers uh, as root uh, uh, doesn't really feel safe. So uh, one um, uh, one thing I, I, I want to try out next is to bring somehow L, LDAP uh, uh, into the containers to, so that I can uh, run the containers uh, without root uh, access. Um, yeah, another problem uh, right now is uh, if you're doing collaborative um, uh, workflows with, with JupyterHub is that um, there is no real way to, to, to get groups right now into, into the uh, JupyterHub environment. And I have, uh, I'm working on, 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 on uh, enabling it, but uh, yeah still not ready and uh, you have the, the pull request here for this work. Um, yeah, but now, now back uh, to the OpenStack uh, problems I had. Um, it was mainly uh, storage issues. So um, first I was naive and I used uh, for the homes, for each home, a Cinder backed volume. This leads to quite a lot of volumes. <laughs> And um, uh, it was really hard to back up because uh, um, they, yeah, I, I didn't find a, a good solution to to to, to back up uh, uh, block storage PVCs in uh, in Kubernetes uh, so that you can um, track all the the users and uh, to whom this uh, PVC belong. Um, yeah, 
then also this lead to some to some problems in Cinda. So startup times um, increased, and um, we also had a problem in in the caller setup that um, uh, there was some um, timeouts in in the Apache uh, used for the for, for the Cinda container, and um, yeah. So I decided um, to switch over to some uh, shared file system uh, and. First, uh, I was using Manila generic server, so with NFS, because it was quite easy to set up. But uh, soon I run into another problem uh, that uh, I had. Uh, um, I used the Word, Word IO um, driver for for the for storage, so um, it was only capable of running uh, thirty shares per. Um, uh, uh, Manila server, share server, and um, after after that, uh, creating new PVCs failed, so that was not an, uh, a, a good thing. Also, resizing you know, didn't really work for me. We're uh, running out of time. Uh, oh, uh, again, a little faster, thank you. Okay, um, I will speed up. Yeah, so I decided uh, to, to use CephFS instead, and because um, um, it's quite easy to to to, to in, integrate it in Kubernetes and um, easy to backup as well. And uh, also, uh, I could uh, design the, the the structure of the the homes and the shares, the folders myself. So uh, it's easy to reuse. Maybe giving users access uh, to the files in in an own cloud or whatever. Uh, way, um, yeah, and uh, maybe a, a few things that uh, we are currently developing. So uh, we we want to have more fine-grained monitoring. Uh, GPU um, support is still a uh, question uh, ask a lot from from our researchers and uh, lecturers, and um, uh, yeah. We are we, we had quite a few problems with the grading service, this NP grader, and uh, right now we are um, developing an, a new grading service based on on this NP grader that uh, should fix a lot of these issues. And uh, when we are ready, we will really release it as open source. And yeah, of course, there's always uh, uh, there's still the plan to to have Jupyter hubs for for, for research. And my last point is uh, we are, as always, hiring. And uh, if someone is interested or someone can recommend uh, uh, some capable of uh, open stack engineers, so please, you're welcome to do so. So I am uh, finished. Thank you.